So the 2.1 trailer is finally out and I took a whole day of analyzing and theorizing as well as researching every little detail that I could find interesting and most likely spoiled myself as to what's going to happen in the 2.1 Archon Quest. I will right away tell you guys that I might already be spoiling you with this video but don't worry I'll put a warning right before I tell you what might happen. So please be prepared and hold everything that I say with the biggest grain of salt that you can imagine. Here's the 20 hidden details that's right 20. I found 20 again hidden details that you didn't know about the Genshin Impact 2.1 trailer. At number 1, the opening scene of the trailer where Yai tells you to count is most probably due to a some sort of clairvoyance spell or ability that Yai has or maybe the traveler having a premonition. Two scenes specifically where you're asked to count is a quick test if you're still conscious by Yai. And the following scene is linked to the final scene where you can skip or wait until later on. In the second scene, you can see Watatsumi Island which cannot be the actual traveler, but a spiritual form or the traveler seeing through something else's eyes. The angle and the height as well as the comparison to Watatsumi's geography doesn't seem to show any location that high for the traveler to physically be on. Second, the Tori gates on Watatsumi Island as well as the general structure of the San Gonomiya Shrine all have a different design compared to Inazuma City's buildings. The corners of each roofing piece is characterized by fins or tails of fish as well as waves and bubble motifs on the centers of each structure. In the live stream, we also see different colored shrine maiden clothing compared to the red and white that worship Narukami. The Oroboshi shrine maidens wear a blue and a slightly bluish white pair of Hakama and Kosode. Third, the rundown shrine in one of the scenes is the very first shrine constructed on Watatsumi Island. It was then abandoned and left to ruin after the death of the Oroboshi at the hands of Raiden Shogun. This means that the citizens of Watatsumi Island and the Sangon Miya clan have been there and have been worshipping the Oroboshi for more than the past five centuries, even before the Archon War. Proof of this is the sneak dialogue about how the Shogun struck down the Oroboshi in the Archon War and how she lost something very dear to her. This means that before the Archon War, there were more varied gods and deities, not just the original seven. We already know this. But the fact that this happened more than 500 years ago means that the Sangonomiya clan and the citizens of Watatsumi Island were so attached to their god that they didn't accept boss protection or help at any point in time after the war, which was 500 years ago. Accelerated aging is not a symptom from losing a vision because the citizens of Watatsumi Island are not within the grasp of the Sakoku Decree. Therefore, any vision holders within Watatsumi Island or within the protection of the Sangonomiya clan cannot have their visions taken by the Tenryo Commission. Number 5, Kokomi mentions peace talks and a scene where Sara Kujo was very keen on her reaction while they meet. As well as Kokomi concluding the peace talk probably between Sangonomiya and the Shogun being a lie. But Sara Kujo is known to us for being a very kind person. Just like when she let us go to help the craftsman Masasaki when we were with Yoimiya. Her look and overall urgency could either be her uneasiness of being in the area or uneasiness from knowing the state that the citizens on Watatsumi Island are in. Number 6 is a quick one. There's a hydro slime with a halo over its head in the scene of the hypostasis. At number 7, the Electro Oceanid is most likely located on the largest floating rock in the middle of Seirai Island since there's no other location large enough to be floating or be surrounded by smaller rocks, as well as having a near cliff-like edge at the end of the platform. In the scene of Senora's boss fight, we see her changing into her pyro form. If you freeze at the right moment, you can see a person that looks a lot like the Raiden Shogun. Is this the real Raiden Shogun or is this the same Raiden Shogun but now we have to rescue her? Or is this similar to Zhongli's palace where his gnosis is stored? A catalyst that looks a lot like the Raiden Shogun that stores her gnosis and is nearly taken by Senora right before we barge in. So uncivilized. A really short scene can be found where we first see pyro or simply pyro infused crystal flies flocking to Senora as she morphs into her pyro form. The saying like moths to a flame really sits in this scene. At number 9, Senora's red and white aesthetic as well as her wings and the way she flaps and flexes them are quite similar to moths when they hatch from their cocoon and is very akin to caterpillars when forming their cocoons. She is also very similar to moths in her cryo cocoon since moths are commonly in their pupa stage in the winter and then hatch in the fall or early summer. At number 11, Sarah Kujo's dialogue and the comments about her 
Seems like she's the reason the Fatu we are in Inazuma. She also states that she will do anything, quote anything, to protect her family's honor. From her line, it seems like the Kujo family has already been in ties with the Fatui long ago. And the comments are especially pointed at Sara Kujo as well as her family name itself. Meaning that there's possibly a hidden agenda behind Sara serving the Shogun. 12. The scene where Kazuha is in front of a sword could mean that it's his friend's sword and he's either paying his respects or saying his remarks. Okay, this is where I'm gonna have to start telling you guys that I might end up spoiling you on the future storyline of 2.1 in Genshin Impact. So if you're ready, then please continue. I'll give you 10 seconds just to be sure if you don't want to watch it. Okay, anyone still here? Alright, let's keep going. At number 13, when Kazuha is fighting against Raiden Shogun, they are not at the Omnipresent Statue. Oh no, they're not in the Omnipresent Statue. A huge pillar with gold inlays can be seen in one of the frames as well as a silhouette of a roof of a building. This could just be the same location of the statue and will be updated in 2.1 with a bunch of pillars and new structures. However, the structure of the silhouette does not resemble any other building on Inazuma City. Take note that the curved roofing can only be located, so far as we know, inside of Watatsumi Island, as well as other areas inside of Inazuma, but not on the statue itself. Next is Kazuha's vision, the masterless vision. Now the masterless vision that Kazuha possesses seems like it's slowly changing from a dark gray to a slightly dark blue tint, as well as Kazuha's eyes flashing with the electro element. But this might just be a reflection of the lightning bolts from Raiden Shogun's sword. Number 15, as quoted by Yai herself, some ambitions have the power to heal wounds and bring victory. This most likely points to Kazuha's ambition alone and that it was probably powerful enough to heal the masterless vision and slowly restore the vision and element that it was supposed to have. And possibly, just possibly, if Kazuha was fighting at the Omnipresent Statue, possibly activate all the other visions on the Omnipresent Statue itself while fighting against Raiden. But there's going to be a follow-up to this, which is that when the Traveler enters Raiden's domain, the background behind Raiden changes from a dark red tone to a gold dusty hue. This could either be from Raiden activating the visions on her statue or the Traveler activating them instead. We do see the Traveler with a golden aura but at some point after fighting Raiden, the tone of the domain was reverted back to the previous dark and red tone. My conclusion here is that the gold aura the Traveler has comes from Kazuha's ambition and after Kazuha fights Raiden in a different location or maybe even the statue itself, we then come in and help him right as the Shogun activates all the visions on her statue. The return to the red and black tone is possibly the moment we get to have a proper conversation with Raiden just like in her sneak dialogue. Now another conclusion is that the Traveler channeled the ambitions of his friends, most likely from both Kazuha and his friend's ambition and harnessed it while inside Raiden. Domain. This can be further proven when Yai talks to the Traveler and then the Traveler might end up channeling the visions from there. So the Traveler channels ambitions of his friends, Raiden then activates the visions that she was hoarding which then changes the tone of her domain. Shortly after, they stop and start the conversation. But I think that means something is going to happen to Kazuha within the story. Now I'm starting to see a pattern here Mihoyo, please don't do it. Next. Yai mentions Raiden's name as A. Judging from Mihoyo's previous game, Honkai Impact, the Raiden Shogun's full name is Raiden Mei or Mei Raiden if you start with her first name. We can also assume or conclude that Yai's full name is actually Yai Sakura or Sakura Yai from her previous character's name also in Honkai Impact. At number 18, the new location where we see Raiden's preview is most likely a new quest domain or a map and will lead up to where we find Skaramouche and then fall asleep. Which then brings us back to the first scene of waking up on Narukami Shrine. We either see Watatsumi Island first or wake up to Yei and then fall unconscious and see the island. Either way, we still get to enjoy Yai waking us up in the morning. And lastly, at number 20, Skaramouche mentions that even though eternity lasts as long as it does, well, for eternity, he also says that each moment within that eternity becomes more and more fragile. Could this be a hint to the state that Raiden Shogun is in and as to why the Fatui might be holding her captive or as to why Raiden is acting the way she is? And there you have it, the 20 hidden details you didn't know about Genshin Impact's 2.1 trailer. I hope that you guys enjoyed that video because, well, I did and I sort of hated doing it as well because I pretty much spoiled myself the whole 2.1 storyline. 
I might basically already know what's going to happen in the next update. Anyways, drop a like and hit that subscribe button as well as activating the bell icon to channel my ambition whenever I upload a new video. Comment below on what you guys think of the latest trailer and tell me if I missed anything or if I was wrong in the theories that I made. And with all that said, I'll see you guys later. Bye!